Well, the Co Club members for about six years now at what used to be IBM Palladium Toastmasters and now Decisive Toastmasters. And to both be in the trio in the same year, uh, I think is a really special experience for me. And I'm happy to have her aboard. So to present how to establish and support new clubs, distinguished Toastmaster, Tanya Hall. is Ron and I have also worked really hard at creating clubs together and we're very much a dynamic duo in that regard so I know you guys have just finished lunch and I know you're sitting there thinking oh I have a lot of my mind with the area director and what do I do and where do I get started and now I'm throwing club sponsoring and milk mentoring and building clubs right on top of you every time but we're going to talk about missions and goals That's that building clubs has. We're going to talk about who builds them and how we build them. And everything we do in Toastmasters has to relate back to our Toastmasters mission, to our district mission, because that's our funding guide, guiding principles that we try to strive for. So we're going to go through that today, and by the end of this session, you're going to be able to identify how and why building clubs is going to support the mission how it's going to add value to your role as an area director. You're going to know where to go to get the support to do it and how to identify opportunities. And I think that last one is a big one. How to identify opportunities. We need to know where to look. You see your areas, you've been club members, you look around and you're like, we struggle to get our own guests. How do I build a new club? How many people struggle to get guests? And you're thinking, why do I need to look for clubs, right? We want people to come in our door. We don't want them to go to somebody else's door. But we're going to talk today about why we want to build other doors for them to go to as well. Okay? Do you have a question, William? Oh, I was just scratching my head. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so the Toastmasters mission. We empower individuals to become more effective communicators and leaders. Say it again. We empower individuals to become more effective leaders and leaders. How does the district mission support that? Do you guys remember what the district mission is? Yeah. So the district mission that goes, we build new clubs and support all clubs in achieving excellence. How does the district mission support the Toastmaster mission? The more, the more clubs you build, the more, the more support you get to them, the more able they are to filter that into creating effective communicative leaders. Yeah. We're just creating opportunities. Mm -hmm. Expanding that opportunity. Giving them a chance to go to a place where they can learn and grow. Maybe they're not able to meet on Saturday mornings. Let's create a club where they can meet. Maybe they're not able to go on a Tuesday at lunch. Let's create a club that works for them. So we're just simply, through the district mission of building new clubs and supporting all clubs and achieving excellence, we're simply creating opportunities. Okay? When we look at building clubs, we have to think of the benefits. When, how many people here have ever had the privilege to mentor someone through a new role, first speech? Do you remember the excitement you got when you did that? You saw them stand up there and you were nervous for them and they're standing up and they're giving their icebreaker and you're like, you're gonna do it, you're gonna do it, you're gonna do it, and then they succeed. Remember that feeling, that feeling we get of, we succeeded, we succeeded as mentors. We help somebody get that first step. And that stays with you. Stays with you. Now think of replicating that to 20 members. That feeling when you see 20 members come together, form a club, and deliver their first icebreaker. You've just taken that feeling and replicated it across the board. And that feeling doesn't go away. I was at 
a 15th anniversary party a few weeks ago, and you saw people that were there 15 years ago saying, I remember the day when. Wouldn't it be great if you can sit back and say, I remember the day when? Because you have a part in that. And that's one of the benefits of building clubs, is that satisfaction you get. But what are some other benefits you get when you build a club? You personally, or a member, yeah. Uh, build your legacy. You can build a legacy. I, as I write this, I will tell you guys, I am got to be the worst speller in the world. Just don't acknowledge it. <laughs> <laughs> build a legacy. What else? What other personal benefits do we get when we build clothes? I build our own confidences. Build. Build a new network of colleagues. Oh, you just met a whole new club of people. You share a vision. skills that bring them closer to achieving their personal life mission. Opportunity, they get the opportunity to increase their paycheck. 
Because when you become better communicators and leaders, there's actually benefits to them, to that. So you're helping them achieve their goals for life. You're helping them get that promotion that they didn't know they could. But maybe you're helping them stand up at a wedding and give that toast that they wanted to give. But you're giving them all of that opportunity. And now it's the, how do we do that? So new clubs offer Toastmasters the benefit. They offer us the benefit, and they offer the guests the benefit. And when we establish new clubs, it allows everybody to improve their communication. Your job as area directors is to help support this. Now you guys may want to sit there, and hopefully at the end of this, you'll all come to me and say, I want to grow a new club this year. Okay? That's the dream. Everybody builds a new club. But it's also important to know when your members come to you and say, you know, I've been wondering about building this club. What does it mean? What's involved? You not need to know that information. You need to know that if you don't know it, come to me and my team and we'll help you with it. But this presentation today will give you the fundamental that you need to know so that you can build and answer those questions. Okay? Oh. Interesting. Who? Who builds clubs? I can't do it alone. Everyone. Everyone. Everyone does it. When there is an opportunity. Yeah. Everybody has the opportunity to see and uncover leads. You guys are on the screen. You guys know where there's holes. You see the holes. So area directors and division directors, look at your map. Where are your clubs? Where are they meeting and when are they meeting? And is there a spot that a club could fit? When I was area director, the first thing I did, I had a calendar book. And I took all of the clubs in my, so there was five as an area director, and I mapped them out. When was the meeting and where was the meeting? So now I can see my map. And I can say, okay, I've got Sunday night free and I've got Wednesday free. Well, if I've got Wednesday free, that means there's no clubs in my area on Wednesday. All of a sudden, why? Could there be? Would it work if there was a club in my area on Wednesday? I don't know, but it's worth taking that second look. So map your clubs out. See where they meet. There was one area last year, I think it was area 11, they all met at lunchtime. Well, that also tells me that maybe in Area 11 there might be room for nighttime folks if they're all lunchtime folks. Mm -hmm. So we need to start looking at that and seeing where those gaps are. I'm not sure what everybody's goals are this year. But as you guys think about what your goals are, if it's to build a club, great. If it's to identify an opportunity where the gap is, that's good too. Because as, as club growth director, I have a team that's built to go out and take those leads because not everybody wants to build clubs. They just don't. But there is a team out there that would take your lead and say, Wednesday night, we need a club. We need a club in this area on Wednesday night. And that team will take that lead and start to generate it and build it into something. As area and division directors, your goal is to improve your district in your area. Your goal is to grow new clubs. If that's not your personal goal, that's okay. But share the knowledge within your area so that others can help you and be there to help them when they need it. You've got club sponsors and mentors. Those are the people out there that want to grow a club. They're looking for their DTM credit and they need that sponsoring and mentoring credit club to help them. They're going to be there to work with you. And as an area director and division director, you're gonna work with them to support them. You're gonna guide them to where they need to go to get the resources. We have a dedicated sponsoring and mentoring chair that will work with all the sponsors and mentors. So you're not just saying you're on your own. Read the manual, have fun. <laughs> Have fun. And oh, by the way, the manual's only in English. <laughs> Read it and have fun. We actually have a bilingual sponsor mentor chair that is going to work each month with the team. 
help them uncover the, the needs that they need in order to be successful. And I think that's pretty remarkable that we have that. We're going to go through, I'm going to take water, but we're going to go through this exercise and we're going to answer. So the next few slides are going to talk about whose role is it? So whose job is it? And it's important to know whose job it is so that we can direct the, the question to the right person. Okay? So whose job is it to serve as a contact for <coughs> demo meetings and pre-charter info meetings? Serve as a contact for demo meetings and pre-charter info meetings. Club sponsor. Club sponsor. Generate interest and recruit members in new clubs. Possibly. C club sponsor. C club sponsor. So C. Show new clubs how to hold meetings and elect officers. Club sponsors. Club sponsors. Submit charter paperwork, fees, and dues to world headquarters. Club sponsor. <laughs> Plan charter meetings. Club sponsor. Club sponsor. Now it says this charter meeting. Sponsor, right? Let's change charter meeting to charter party because we like yes. to celebrate it. <laughs> but a club sponsor is the person that gets the club from zero members to 20 members. They make sure that at 20 members there is an executive team in place. They make sure all of the paperwork is filled out, the dues are paid, and that everybody knows what they're doing. That's zero to 20 members. Okay? Are an area 
marry a director and you want to sponsor a club, will you have an executive role on that new club? Yeah. That's a club decision. So all the run elections, they decide who's going to be on there. You'd have to be a club member in order to be a club executive. <coughs> so if you're a club sponsor, you're not technically a club member unless you fill out the paperwork and pay the dues. Okay, but then after that, it comes down to an election process, just like we do in our own clubs. Davinder, you had a question on that. Um, you're going to talk about it later. Okie dokie. <laughs> Any other questions before I move on? Club building receives leads from world headquarters and confirms alignment of new clubs. District director. District director. Yeah. And that's where, you know, every year we're going to build clubs. We're going to build them. And we're going to likely, I'm going to say likely, correct me if I'm wrong, we're going to put those clubs in the area that the person built them in. Because if Nadia builds a club in her area, we're going to give Nadia's area the credit. But when we look at it at the end of the year, it may not make sense to have all of those. If Nadia's a rock star and she creates eight new clubs, plus her current five, she may not want 13 <coughs> clubs in her area. No, 13, 12. So math is my second strong suit. <laughs> <laughs> so club alignment is going to come in. They're going to portion it out. So it's going to start in one area, get a portion out so that no one area is overloaded and it'll be spread out that way. And that's the role of the district director. Okay. Any questions on where the district director does in this? What's the salary? It's what he gets paid by recognition and appreciation. It's the currency wow. of Toastmasters. <laughs> Uh, guide clubs through the first six to twelve months. Club mentors? Mentor. Club mentor. Club. Ensure club officer understands duties and how to perform them. Familiarizes club officers with Toastmasters education program. And then familiarizes the club officers with the distinguished club program. So the mentor picks up when the club gets to 20 members and stays with that club for the first six to 12 months. Why? Give them guidance. What's that? To give them guidance. To give them guidance. To operate the club. Yeah. It's like when a guest becomes a member they filled in their membership application, they've given you the money, and you say thanks. And you don't talk to them for six months. What's going to happen to them? They're going to leave. They're going to leave. It's the same thing with the club. We want to make sure that they're all on the same board. What is a TLI? What is conference? Why would I go? What am I going to get out of it? The mentor is going to help guide them through that. Maybe they haven't had the election Maybe they just all assigned through names out of a hat and that with their election process. You're laughing because it's true. <laughs> this is a good one, by the way. Not, not in the rules, but this is a good one. <laughs> so we want to show them how we do an election. We want to properly execute it. We want to show them how they submit their renewals, their forms, and we want to make sure they're on track. And the more we give up our time for that, the stronger club they're going to be. So in 15 years, we can celebrate the wedding anniversary party. We want to give them that fundamentals. Definitely. What is your view about club sponsors and mentors actually being men members of the club also? I'm fine with it. I have a problem with it. What's your view? Does it, 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 do they have to or? No. Um, so I'll tell you a story in, in my <coughs> experience. Um, Everybody, so Tony, Lee, Ron, and I started collab Toastmasters. Um, none of us were members. It was just an opportunity that was handed to us and we took it and ran with it. Two of us were coded as sponsors and two of us were coded as mentors. I'm not even sure to this day I could tell you which one I was coded as because the four of us worked together as a team. 
We did it as a team from ground zero to the six to 12 months after. None of us were members of the club until the club got close to chartering and two of us became members. Not because we were looking to charter it, because two people fell in love with the club. Mm -hmm. They fell in love with the club and they could get something from the club for themselves. And they stayed with that club a little longer. That's okay. So if you're creating a club in an area because you have a need and you want to be a member, then do it. But do it for you. That would be my, my take. Do it for you. Don't go and be a member of eight clubs because that's what you feel you have to do. Do it for your own personal satisfaction and make sure you know why you're there. Because knowing your why is what we ask guests. Why are you here? Ask yourself, why am I wanting to be a member of this club? If they're 19 and you want to get that to charter, that might be your why. And that's an okay why. But know what your why is. The question is, can you have multiple club mentors and multiple club sponsors, more than the number two? Yes, you can, only to get credit. Okay. So if you want to talk four people into doing the work and only giving credit to two, let me know how it works. <laughs> um, but some people will come along. There are a lot of mentors in this district that will mentor sponsors and mentors. So. Use them. They're a wealth of knowledge. They will come out and support and help you along the way. And they're not looking for the credit. They're looking to be acknowledged with things. And that's okay. okay. Any other questions on how those work? Boy. I'm confused between club mentor and coach. I, I have, I see a lot of that. Mentor and club. coach? The difference. Sure. So, Mentors and sponsors are really when the club is in formation. So sponsors are zero to 20. Mentors are 20 plus six months, okay? That is a new club. A coach is a club that's already received their charter at some point. So they've gotten their banner, they've been in production, they've been doing things, and then their numbers hit a lull, and they're not sure how to get them back. So their numbers drop below 13, and they need that extra help to come back to where they should be. And that's where a coach will step in. So a coach will help an existing club get stronger, and a sponsor and a mentor will help a new club come into formation. Thank you. Any other questions on those four roles? Hi. Right. Are you guys ready to learn how we build clubs? No, I'm going to fast forward a few slides here. Okay, club building cycle. There is six steps to building a club. First, we have to identify the leads. Then we have to contact them and see if they're open to a meeting. Then we have to present the meeting and the value of Toastmasters to them. We have to answer their questions and be there for them if they have any follow-up. Then we lead them through a demo and a chartering process. And then we follow up, and follow up is that six months afterwards to make sure they're on track. We're gonna break these sections down into bite-sized pieces. <coughs> Did you get that? You were taking a photo still? I hate the photos of you. photogenic person. Leads. And, and we briefly touched on this before. Leads can come from anywhere. See what's around you. What pockets are uncovered in your area? Are there meeting opportunities for morning, lunchtime, nighttime? Is there a day of the week that's missing a spot? Is there a business near you? Or maybe a church group that is looking for that extra activity to happen? There, Everywhere, you just have to open your eyes and start thinking through a new set of lenses.